Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna be covering five watchouts when it comes to Fashion File, whether you're looking to purchase from them or you're looking to sell, so you'll definitely wanna stick around. Fashion File. So for those of you who are not familiar with Fashion File, they are an online reseller of luxury items that is actually tied to Neiman Marcus. They are the owners of the platform. So when we look at Fashion File, and I'll actually include some screenshots from their actual website, they do a really great job in offering attainable luxury that is curated just for you, the, the luxury shopper. What I will say is that Fashion File is really good in providing a broad range of different products when it comes to luxury items. So when they talk about attainable, it, it really is from an availability standpoint. I can go onto Fashion File at any point, for the most part, any point, and look for items from a lot of the, the major fashion houses. So you think Chanel, Dior, Hermes, Louis Vuitton, um, you know, Bottega Veneta, Celine, Gucci. I mean, you think of the Tiffany, um, any luxury brand out there, it doesn't just have to be with handbags, but any luxury brand out there, handbags, shoes, accessories, jewelry, is actually curated onto Fashion File. So they do a really great job offering all of these luxury products on a platform that no matter where you are located, you know, if you have a boutique within a five minute drive of you or your, you know, five hour flight away from a boutique, you have the ability to go onto Fashion File, click around, apply different filters, and check out all of these different products. So Fashion File is a really great platform. They call it re-commerce. Um, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. But they do offer a ton of different products, a ton of different price points, a ton of different conditions of different products. So when we think of attainable luxury, yes, Fashion File is an amazing platform for that. However, I have noticed after months and months of using their website, I have noticed some things and that's really why I wanted to create this video today for you is, you know, in my experience, the five things to look out for when it comes to this platform. And so, so let's go ahead and get into it. My first watch out when it comes to Fashion File is actually their filters. So I mentioned this earlier, how great it is to be able to filter by brand and look under certain price points or at certain price points and even conditions of products. But I will caution everyone out there when it comes to the condition of certain products to not be fooled by new items or even by excellent items. In my experience going through and actually using this filter, I don't know what kind of criteria Fashion File uses when it comes to assigning a category or a product line as new or excellent or even very good because it seems to be all across the board. And I actually have some examples. So we're gonna see this in real time. I'm gonna go ahead and pull my phone out. But the first one I have is, uh, let's go ahead and look for Gucci. So we are going to go onto Fashion Files website and go in here and type in the Gucci Soho Disco bag. So let me go ahead and type that in. And as I'm doing that, obviously that's a very general search. It's gonna give me 66 different items. That's a lot, I want to filter it down. So I'm gonna go to condition and select new, which it looks like there's only two. So that's, that's kind of perfect for this example. So in looking at these two, they are, a little bit under normal retail price, but they're both labeled as new. So, okay, I think I'm getting a really good deal. I'm going down here and I'm gonna keep scrolling down on condition and expand this and it shows that there are faint scratches on the hardware. Well, if this is a new bag, why are there scratches on the hardware? We'll get to that in a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of scrolling through the different images. And again, Fashion File does a really good job of providing different angles of the bag. You can see here on the inside of the bag, there's this cream kind of fabric, um, you know, the corners, it shows everything looks really good, it looks really new. And so I'm like, okay, well that bag wasn't bad. Let me go to this other one. It's a little bit less expensive than the other new one. That's interesting. So I'm gonna go scroll down and look at the condition. Again, click there. There are no notes, so okay. So this is another new bag, but there are no, you know, nothing, nothing of note with that. And so I'm gonna go ahead and continue scrolling through. And all of a sudden, why is the interior of this bag black? The other one was cream, why is this one black? They're both new bags. 
how new are they really? Is this a new collection? Is one newer than the other? I don't know. Let's go over to Gucci's website. So in typing in or going over to Gucci, I'm going to click the little magnifying glass and I'm going to type in Soho Disco. It's their own website. I don't need to type in Gucci. So we're going to type in Soho Disco. And okay, a new bag is $13.50. So Fashion File was a little bit less expensive. But when I go in and I click the image, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of scroll through very similar images as to Fashion File. But hopefully, all right, show me the inside of the bag. Okay, the inside of the bag is cream. So the other one on Fashion File that had the black interior, that was new, but going to Gucci, I can actually just go ahead and add this product into my cart. So I'm gonna go ahead and add to my shopping bag. And you can see $13.50 for a new bag. So when it comes to Fashion File, okay, you think that you're getting a really good deal because I'm getting a new I'm getting a new Gucci, I'm getting a new bag, it's much less expensive than if I were to go through the fashion house themselves, but how new is that actual bag? You saw it on Gucci's website that the interior for that one in particular was cream, but in the new bag on Fashion File, it was black. So again, is this from a couple years ago or previous seasons or collections? I don't know if it's a new bag, I would just think that it's supposed to be a new bag that I would just like I would get from Gucci themselves. So that, I don't know, it, it throws up some red flags to me. Obviously from a price standpoint, it is a little bit less expensive than on you know buying through Gucci. So you can save a little bit of money going that way. But there are just certain questions that that puts into my mind. You know, it, how new is this bag? Is this actually, is this a legitimate bag? I don't know. Fashion File does do their own authenticity. They do guarantee 100% authenticity or you get all of your money back on an item. So there is always that, um, you know, in the back of your mind to kind of give you a peace of mind. So um, so there's there's definitely that to think about. Now, I mentioned earlier, don't fall for excellent either. So I'm going to pull up another example here. Going to their website, um, I actually did this a couple days ago, so you'll see some, some sales. We'll get to that in a minute. But you'll see some sales on here that are no longer valid. But going ahead and doing a search for the Dior Saddlebag. Obviously, that's a very popular bag. And with their filters, it does bring up, or rather with their search, it does bring up a lot of different selections or different items. So I found one bag in particular under the Excellent label. And so I'm going to go ahead and click into that. It's $32.50. Great deal, especially when you compare it to Dior's website and how much they normally or currently are retailing that bag for. And when you scroll through the items, you know, everything looks really good. You're really excited. And then you get to this. So with that tassel, the leather is damaged and very noticeably on the front of the bag. I'm sorry, but I don't deem that as excellent condition if the front of the bag has that big of a mark on it. That's not excellent in my mind. So, you know, you have new products which could have been years old and just maybe never been used, but somehow they're new. Or you have excellent items that have huge flaws on them. And so just keep that in mind when you are going through Fashion File and you are looking at different products that the way that they classify products may not match what you have in your mind as what should be a new or an excellent product. So one of the things that I've done to kind of combat that, and I would consider this to be kind of like a best practice, is if you do have an account with Fashion File, and I would encourage anyone to just go ahead and sign up for an account, it's free. But in doing so, you have the ability to go through and heart your different items. So as you're scrolling, maybe for the Dior Saddlebag, if you see certain ones, under a certain filter that you really like or you want to look a little bit deeper into instead of diving into each bag you know one by one by one and having to scroll and getting lost in terms of your search just go through and like or love those items and it gets added into a list to where you can go back later on and actually take a look at them and it makes just comparing two different items that much easier because I found that in the past if I try and use their 
um, the, the landing page, or rather the category page for a particular item, I get lost or I lose track of items that I've looked at or compared previously, and it's just really confusing. So if you go through and heart the items, it curates it down into a much smaller selection, and then from there, you can go in, take a deeper dive into a bag. You can then compare that to other ones, deselect. You can always unheart something, but it definitely makes it a lot easier. But I would just highly recommend, do not, please 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 do not get lost or caught up in the descriptions from fashion file because new or excellent items in my experience have rarely matched those associations so definitely something to keep in mind so the second watch out when it comes to fashion file is anything less than excellent condition so i cautioned or kind of take it with a grain of salt anything that's deemed as new or excellent I personally do not look at anything that is less than excellent condition. Reason for that is I actually purchased, and again, in inserting a video here to show what I mean, um, I actually purchased a Celine belt bag a few months ago, and this, now granted, from this picture, now in, in retrospect, I look at this and I can tell how bad it truly is, but at the time, I, you know, it was deemed as very good, it was an excellent deal, it did mention, to their point, or to their defense, it did mention structure wear, and obviously now looking at these pictures, I can see, yes, there is actually a lot of structure wear, but um, in looking at this bag, they disclosed a lot of different items on the outside in particular. So again, structure wise, they disclosed that there were some scratches on the hardware. I could live with that. The bag or this one in particular was very, I say very old, but it was at least in the, the Phoebe Philo era. So it was at least five years old, if not older. Clearly it had some structure issues, so I could deal with that. I'm gonna put an organizer in it, it'll be fine. But in none of these pictures did it actually disclose a stain that was on the inside of the bag. You can see from all of these interior shots that they included in this posting, nothing shows a stain of about a quarter size that I still to this day don't know what that stain was. I Once I got the bag, I love this color. It is such a pretty color. They don't necessarily have this size in this color anymore. And I think this is this was a seasonal color. So I don't I don't even think you can get this anymore. But I, I really wanted this bag. I love the fact that it was an older Celine. It was the Phoebe Philo era Celine. So it had the accent over the E on the logo. And I just really liked this bag. And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to put an organizer in it. It's going to be fine. As soon as I got it and saw that stain, I tried to clean it. I tried to get whatever that was off. It did not come out. I said, you know what? I am just going to let it go. The bag is going to get used. It's going to get worn. And I kept it for a couple months. But the fact that it was never disclosed just ate at me and that plus the structure where it eventually did get to me over time the very good designation I just I thought I could deal with it I couldn't do it so I did actually end up sending the bag back because of their buyback program which I'll get into that in a little bit. But so I was able to get some of my money back from the purchase, but it's just, that was a lesson learned there because I did lose money on that purchase in total from when I purchased it and then when I sold it back to them, I did lose money. So it was an expensive lesson to learn, but just that was a lesson that I learned where I will never purchase anything less than excellent quality from Fashion File. I know that when they disclose certain things, obviously structure wear, that is a big one that you can visually see, but there are other items that based on the angle of the camera, they may not be disclosing. Of course, you can always go to Fashion File. You can always call them and call them out on it and try and get your money back that way. I didn't necessarily do that. I've heard or rather read other people's experiences in doing that. It wasn't necessarily completely successful so I just for me I just let it go again expensive lesson learned but just moving forward I highly caution if you are looking to purchase anything on fashion file just stick with anything that is new or excellent anything below that you really are running a huge risk of the bag not being represented the way that it truly is or certain wear with the bag just being way beyond any kind of repair or in some cases you can actually have it repaired, but you're gonna have to shell out hundreds or maybe even thousands of dollars to get it repaired. So in the end, is purchasing something that's that you know, good or very good worth it? For me, it's not. And so I just wanted to share that as an additional watch out when it comes to Fashion File. 
For the third watch out when it comes to Fashion File, it's all around their sales. And I use air quotes around sale when it comes to Fashion File because normally, based on the way that their pricing structure is, on a good day, Fashion File is much higher than what a lot of fashion houses retail their products for. But then when you factor in a sale on the website, you're still in, a, in most cases, you're still paying more on Fashion File on sale than you would if you were to actually go and purchase directly from a specific fashion house. And I have two examples from Louis Vuitton. I took these screen grabs earlier this week when the sale was going on. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna just let these roll over here. But um, I was out of town on a business trip this week and I actually saw this tote out in the wild. So we will do a search for the on the go tote from Louis Vuitton. Uh, it's a really nice tote actually that that'll be a separate conversation but from this tote you'll see that 158 different items come up when you search for this of course you know for me i would want to find a new bag so i'm going to just go ahead and select new on this and scroll until we find the one in black because this this is a really gorgeous looking bag and so the on prompt monogram uh, they call it the giant on the go tote you'll see here in the new giftable condition retails on their website for three thousand seven hundred and seventy five dollars okay so going double checking the condition there are no comments around any kind of marks or wear and tear the year is from this year so it's 2021 so you think it's it's in pretty new condition but then when we jump over to louis vuitton's website and look at this exact same bag on their website at this point at that day and time it was in stock and on sale for three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars just doing the normal math that is over five hundred dollars higher on Fashion Files website than if you purchase from Louis Vuitton. Now factor in their sale where again, for every thousand you spend, they give you a hundred dollars off. So for 3000 or anything over 3000, they give you 300 off. So doing that math with Fashion Files sale, you are still going to end up paying $3,475 for the on the go tote. Whereas if you had gone to Louis Vuitton's website and purchased it because it was in stock, ended up saving yourself a couple hundred dollars by only paying three thousand two hundred and fifty dollars so again kind of comparing the two websites the fashion file sale you're, you're not getting the discount they are basically pulling the wool over your eyes and making you think that you are getting a good deal when i'm sorry you're not getting a good deal so let's take another look at another Louis Vuitton. Again, was shopping around the same time and looking at an Alma BB. So this is a very popular bag. You can see 148 different items when I search for that, but then going and applying a filter, looking for a new item, um, we are able to find, let me just wait until my, my video catches up with me. Okay, so looking at that bag, I'm gonna just go ahead and look at the just regular monogram print. So retails for $2,395 on their website in new condition that that Alma BB but then when we jump over to Louis Vuitton's website and look at the exact same bag in monogram Alma BB size $1,620 now here's the difference is that on Louis Vuitton's website it's out of stock as always um, you know you are gonna have to put in more work to get that bag just because of what type of bag it is it's a very popular bag um, but you can see fashion file had it for you know over two thousand dollars taking into account the sale that sale that they were running at the time because it was over two thousand taking two hundred dollars off it was still over two thousand dollars for that bag when it normally retails for one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars so I, I just in my mind when we think of these brands these products that we we want we've saved up our money and we want to go out there and make sure that we're getting the best possible deal i just think it is it's their business practice but in my opinion as a consumer it's shady the fact that they mark these products up so much and then discount them by offering sales on products when you can just go to the fashion house and put in maybe put in a little extra work to get the bag that you want 
but you can buy it from them for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars less. And so just please, please, please do your research when it comes to different products that you find on Fashion File, because, you know, if it's something that is readily available from, you know, an online website. So if you think of Gucci, you can buy them or buy their products on their website, Louis Vuitton, Dior, uh, Celine, a lot of other fashion houses allow you to purchase on their websites. I think really Chanel is the only difficult one. Chanel and, and Hermes. Um, but, you know, just keep that in mind. Actually, no, you can buy Hermes on their website. Sorry. So really, it's just Chanel you can't purchase on the website. Everywhere else, just please do your research. If you can buy it less expensive on the Fashion House's website, please, by all means, go ahead and do so. Do not give Fashion File more money than is needed for these items. So please don't get caught in their sales. So the fourth watch out when it comes to Fashion File, kind of shifting gears a little bit away from sales, is just the normal everyday pricing that they have on their website. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they do tend to mark up certain items, particularly ones that are more popular and more difficult to get. Case in point, Chanel. I actually have two examples of this. So the first one, I will actually point out this one behind me. So this is one that I purchased from Fashion File and paid over retail. I know it's cringy. I hate the fact that I even said that, but this is one that normal, I believe at the time, sorry, they've had so many different price increases, it's hard to keep track, but at the time of purchasing from Fashion File, this bag, so this mini reissue was $4,000, or maybe it was 44 at the time. Anyways, low $4,000 in, in US dollars. When I found this on Fashion File. This was over $5,000. However, however, I had been eyeing this bag up for quite a while. I wanted that size. I love the hardware. It is so black. So technically the so black is more expensive than the than the non so black. Uh, normally it's a $300 upcharge to get the so black hardware. So at the time, if it was 4,000, it would have been 43. Or if it was 44, it would have been 47. But um, that that was another consideration, but I love this bag. I wanted it in the black. I wanted it in the chevron. I finally just could not get my hands on it in store. So I bit the bullet and I bought it. That is one of my absolute favorite pieces that I've purchased this year. That is one of my most used bags. I wear that thing constantly. I absolutely absolutely adore it. See, I'm getting tongue tied just thinking about it. But I absolutely love that bag, and I would pay what I paid for this bag again. And so if you are willing to pay more than retail, by all means, go for it. Hello. I'm, I'm not going to, um, you know, judge anybody for that. However, if there are certain pieces out there, and this goes to my second example, if there are certain pieces out there that you are looking for, really, truly, truly consider and think about it and really just sit with it for a while and have those those thoughts and those conversations with yourself to say, am I truly willing to pay over retail for an item? Case in point, um, again, on Chanel's website, they have this um, pouch in essence or a clutch that I fell in love with. I absolutely, you know, love it. I still love it. I still want this. And just for you know what's in giggles, I said, I'm going to go see if they have it on Fashion File. Looking at Fashion Files website, I was able to find some of these. However, however, in finding some of them, they are all over $3,000 for this item. Over $3,000, keeping in mind on Chanel's website. On their website, this item normally retails for $1,875. I'm gonna say that one more time. This pouch with handle, the Chanel 19 pouch with handle, normally retails for $1,875. On Fashion Files website, in excellent condition, so this isn't even brand new, this bag was at the time 5% off, $3,035. So over $1,000 higher than retail. That is when I said absolutely not, I am not willing to pay that much for it. Um, so I got so this one yes I was willing to pay a thousand dollars more or uh, thereabouts, but I'm sorry for this. 
I just, I really had a moment of reflection and it's actually over a thousand dollars. If you can get one of their five, 10, 20% off deals, if you're waiting around long enough and everybody else is waiting around long enough for those discounts to kick in, you may be able to get it lower than that, but they are listing these products for thousands of dollars over retail. So please do not get fooled by Fashion Files pricing. Do your research when it comes to these items. And that's, uh, it, I will say, Fashion File is fantastic when it comes to the amount of information that they provide on products. If anything that you're looking for, you can normally find it on Fashion File. You can look at dimensions. You can look at different angles of the bags. They provide close-ups of hardware, of strap details, of the inside of bags. They provide, for the most part, um, images of a mannequin. So you can see how far down it falls, how it fits crossbody, how it handles, um, if it's held by a top handle. You can see all of this. So Fashion File does a really great job. So I would say you use their platform in terms of doing your research. However, do not get, you know, blinded by their pricing model because when it comes to very popular brands like Chanel, for the most part, all of these items are marked up so high, especially newer items, they are above retail for hundreds if not thousands of dollars. So I highly caution you, do not be fooled when it comes to their pricing because in a lot of cases it is way above retail. And now for the fifth and final watch out when it comes to Fashion File, this is a, this is a two-parter. So it all centers around resell. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, pretty much all my other watch outs are if you are looking to purchase, but this last one is if you are looking to sell to Fashion File. And so obviously reselling luxury items is a huge market. It's a huge market. Sometimes an item doesn't work out for you or you're trying to clean out your closet, you have an item that no longer fits your lifestyle and you want to sell it. So you go onto a website like Fashion File and you may think, hey, I want to sell my classic flap. I don't, by the way, but maybe I want to sell my classic flap. Let me go see how much I can get for it. The item that is listed on Fashion Files site is not what you are going to get for that bag. So this bag, when I purchased it, um, it, I did not purchase it for what it currently retails for, but let's pretend like I did. So right now in the States, this bag is $8,800. That's so, so icky, but it is a very expensive bag. And maybe I purchased this, it didn't work out for me, and I think I'm gonna sell it to Fashion File and get all my money back because it's such a great investment piece. In selling this back to Fashion File, you will not get the current market value for it. So you will not get $8,800 back, but if Fashion File turns around and you know maybe they're selling other classic flaps for $9,000, you are not gonna be getting $9,000 for your classic flap. The way, I mean, let's think about this. Fashion File is a business. They are in the business to make money. So they are going to buy low and sell high, just like stocks. So if you were to go to Fashion File and say, hey, I have a classic flap that I want to sell you, they are going to, I don't wanna say lowball you, but they may end up lowballing you and only give you a fraction of what you think the product is actually worth. That's not to say that they're then gonna turn around and sell it for that. They are going to mark that up as much as they can to make back their margin or to make their profits. So in a completely hypothetical situation, because I have not reached out to Fashion File to sell any of my bags, I absolutely love all my bags, but let's just pretend here that I did wanna sell my classic flap. On today's market, it normally retails for around 9,000. So I think, you know, it is absolutely worth 9,000. So I'm gonna sell it to Fashion File for 9,000. They're gonna turn around, appraise the product, guarantee its authenticity, maybe give me a quote for $3,000. I'm offended, that's not what I paid for it. No, it's not what, you know, I paid for it, but it's what Fashion File values it at. That is, you know, kind of, their bottom line, you may be able to go back and not haggle with them, but give it maybe a month, go back and, you know, just put the request in again to see if they'll give you more. I, I have read that some people have been able to do that, but it's not going to be thousands and thousands of dollars more. So maybe they offer you $3,000 for that bag. You say, all right, fine. 
I want the cash, they will give it to you. That's one of the good things about Fashion File is that they are a reseller, they are not a consignment shop. So when you sell your product to them, they give you that money, not instantly, but they will turn around and give you that within you know a normal processing window. It, they don't wait around for the product to actually sell before you get paid. So that's kind of the, the trade-off there is that you may be giving them the bag to turn around and sell, but you're getting that cash almost immediately and you don't have to wait for it to sell like you would on normal consignment. But so they give you the money, their hands are clean, they move on. They are then gonna go and take that bag remarket it, you know, take all the stock photos, write the descriptions. They're paying somebody to, to, to do that. They are paying somebody to authenticate the product. They are paying storage fees and security, I'm sure, to monitor your, you know, what used to be your bag amongst thousands of others in their warehouse. And when they put it back up on the website, it is going to show for easily 9,000, if not more, because of the popularity of this bag. And so while you may not be making that, Fashion File is making their money on the back end. Again, they are a for-profit business. They are in the business to make money and they are gonna do so. They have margins, margin requirements that they have to hit on their back end. I don't work for Fashion File, so I don't know what those are, but these are just general you know, business 101 ideas or tactics. And so when they buy low, they're gonna sell that item as high as they possibly can. That does not mean that you are going to be getting the difference. So just wanted to put that out there that um, because there is this misconception that luxury handbags are investment pieces because I bought something for X amount of money I'm gonna turn around and sell it for Y and I'm gonna make a profit that is not always the case and with fashion file what's great about them is they do a lot of that heavy lifting in exchange for that they will give you a lower amount for that bag than if you were to go out and probably sell it yourself but keep in mind you know by going through fashion file they handle, again, all of the listing um, items that have to go up as far as photography, descriptions. They have to pay for all of their back-end overhead. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to ship the product. You don't have to insure it. You don't have to haggle and finagle with uh, people that are looking to purchase the bag. So there are a lot of advantages to going through Fashion File, but the one thing I just wanted to say is if you see an item on Fashion File going for X number of dollars, that does not mean that you, if you sell that item to Fashion File, that you are gonna make that amount of money. It is going to be a fraction of that. Now, on the flip side, for those of you who are looking to purchase from Fashion File, and I actually have a couple different pieces, actually these two up here, um, my mini reissue in this clutch, and then this uh, card holder over here that I have purchased from Fashion File. Had great experiences with all of them, um, got them in all excellent or new condition, and very happy with them. I still use them on a pretty consistent basis, and you know but say for some weird reason i just did not want these items anymore the beauty of buying from fashion file is the fact that you can after a certain amount of time or say outside of that 30-day refund um, or return window um, you can actually return the product and it's what they call their buyback program and so within a certain amount of time again very close to when you originally purchased it they will give you more money for the items so if i got this clutch and only wore it around for six to eight weeks and wanted to sell it back to them they will actually give me up to about 75 percent of what i paid for the item back in, in terms of a refund, if you choose to get a Fashion File credit or um, a Neiman Marcus credit, they will add a little 10% kicker onto that because again, they want to keep everything in house. But the longer you get away from that purchase window or when you actually received your item, the less you actually get back. So that's just something to keep in mind is that if you do end up purchasing from Fashion File, you wear the item around for a bit, maybe it works for you, but maybe if it doesn't, you can return it. However, you are only gonna get a certain percentage of that item back or rather of your purchase amount back. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. The closer to when you purchase it, you get more. 
as you get kind of throughout that year's time, it is a prorated amount. So the longer you have the bag, the longer you're using it, obviously the less and less that you are gonna be able to recoup from that purchase. So that is just something else to keep in mind. Um, again, Fashion File, they're a for-profit entity. They are in the business of making money. I think they do have a lot of really great policies when it comes to their refunds, their guarantees um, on authenticity, their return windows. There are a lot of different positives to purchasing from Fashion File. And again, I've, I've purchased quite a few pieces and have been incredibly happy with them. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to point out those five things that if you are going to purchase from them, they are just watch outs. Again, I would not discourage anyone from purchasing from them. I think they're a great business. It's just there are certain things that the way that they're presented are not, in my experience, necessarily accurate. So just different things to look out for, just being a savvy shopper, just making sure that you are getting the best experience or the best bang for your buck as possible when it comes to your luxury purchases. So those are my five watch outs when it comes to Fashion File. And that's not to say that anyone should not purchase from Fashion File because I know for myself, I've purchased this mini reissue, this Chanel clutch, and even this SLG back here. And I've had an amazing experience. It's just please do your research. Make sure that you are getting the best bang for your buck when it comes to your luxury purchases. Make sure that you are not thinking one thing when something else is actually the reality of a situation. Just be an informed shopper. That is the biggest advice I can give. Out of those five watch outs, it all has to do with just being well informed. So if you like this content, if you are now informed, definitely give this video a thumbs up. If you are interested in other videos similar to this, then definitely hit the subscribe button. And if you have other comments or other experiences with Fashion File, insert those down below. But I will catch you in the next video. See ya.